the tragic death of Lincoln Park's Chester Bennington. While on vacation in Arizona with his wife and family, Bennington returned home alone, saying he had work to do. Shortly before 9 a.m. PDT on July 20th, 2017, Bennington was found dead by his housekeeper at his home in Palos Verde Estates, California. His death was ruled a suicide by hanging. Bennington left no suicide note. Bandmate and close friend Mike Shinoda confirmed his death on Twitter, writing, Shocked and heartbroken, but it's true. An official statement will come out as soon as we have one. On July 21st, Brian Elias, the Chief of Operations for the Office of the Medical Examiner Coroner, confirmed that a half-empty bottle of alcohol was found at the scene, but no drugs were present. A toxicology report released in December reported a trace amount of alcohol in Bennington's system at the time of death. Bennington's death occurred on what would have been Chris Cornell's 53rd birthday. Colonel's death was also ruled a suicide by hanging two months earlier. After Bennington's death, Lincoln Park canceled the rest of their One More Lie tour and refunded tickets. From the early age of 11, Bennington abused alcohol, cocaine, methamphetamine, LSD, and opium to numb himself to the trauma left behind by the essay he experienced as a child. Like many who suffer from addiction, he also struggled with other mental health disorders, something he was upfront and transparent about throughout his career. He hoped that his honesty would encourage others to speak up and seek help, as he did in 2006 when he decided to get sober. When discussing his struggles with addiction during an interview with a guardian, Bennington said, I'd become a person that wasn't me. I'm a nice, friendly guy that was always stuck behind this monster that was really just a hurt kid. Bennington was proud of his sobriety, often saying, It's not cool to be an alcoholic. It's cool to be part of recovery. But despite his success at recovering from addiction, Bennington continued to struggle with severe depression. In an interview, he described his mind as, A bad neighborhood that I should not be walking alone, highlighting the importance of reaching out for help. In the days before he died, Chester Bennington had seemed happy and well, his widow were called. Indeed, the night before the 41-year-old took his own life at a couple's California home, he was at his best, she said. We were on a family vacation, and he decided to go back home to do a television commercial, his widow recalled. This was not a time where we or any of our family suspected this to happen, which is terrifying. We thought everything was okay. In retrospect, though, Talinda Bennington realizes her husband was in a dark place. Bennington emphasized that there is no simple explanation for her husband's struggles over the years, attributing his depression to a confluence of factors. The musician was open about his troubled life, including his experience battling addictions to cocaine and methamphetamine. He also said he suffered SA as a child. It's a lifetime of building blocks to unhealthy emotional, mental behavior, emotional pain, Bennington described. If we can find good coping mechanisms, if we have people we trust that we can talk to, that helps us to make better choices for ourselves, she said. And my husband didn't have that in a lot of situations. Witnessing her husband's suffering made Bennington determined to educate herself on the causes and effects of depression, she told Cooper. Like and follow for more wild stories in rock music.